Good evening. We are in section 1.5, which covers ratios, rates, and conversions. Tonight, most of what you've done is review, but we're going to take it one step further. And the converting units is probably going to be the newest thing for you. So take your time. You can fast forward if you understand something or rewind or pause if you have questions. So let's start off with the big gray box that reviews ratio on page 37. It says that a ratio compares two numbers by division. Basically, a ratio is a fraction. A ratio of two numbers, A and B, where B cannot be zero, can be written in three ways. As a fraction, which is A divided by B, colon, which would be written as A to B, or as the word 2, A to B. Now remember, B cannot be zero, because otherwise you have an undefined value. For every A units of one quantity, you have B units of another quantity. You can think of a ratio as a multiplicative relationship. For example, if the ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls in class is 2 to 1, then the number of boys is 2 times the number of girls. A ratio that compares quantities measured in different units is called a rate. A rate with the denominator of one unit is called the unit rate. For example, miles per hour. You're comparing miles and hours, therefore that's a rate. In the solve it, you can express each athlete's speed at the number of meters traveled, one per second. This is an example of a unit rate, meters traveled per one second of time. Essential understanding. You can write ratios and find unit rates to compare quantities. You can also convert units and rates to solve problems. In the solve it problem at the top, I want you to write this down. So here we have three different stores and the price per shirts for each of those stores. So store A, two shirts cost $25. Store B, four shirts cost $45. And store C, three shirts cost $30. Here's what the question asks. You are shopping for t-shirts. Which store offers the best deal? Now, this should be very easy. You can write each as a ratio. For example, you could write 25 divided by 2, 45 divided by 4, and 30 divided by 3. This should be review. As you know, in order to compare, you would have to find the price per shirt from each store. So if you, for example, did store A, $25 divided by 2, that gives you $12.50 per shirt. And store B and C, you can see as well, store B will give you $11.25 per shirt, and C gives you $10 per shirt. So which one would be the better deal? The best deal would be store C, because that's the unit rate that's the lowest. It's store C has the unit rate that's the cheapest price per shirt. So I want you to look at practice A, number one, where it says running. The problem says, Trisha ran 10 kilometers in two and a half hours. Jason ran seven and a half kilometers in two hours. Olga ran nine and a half kilometers in two and a quarter hours. Who has the fastest average speed? Pause the video and figure your answer out. If you solve the problem, Olga has the fastest speed. Now look at the next gray box, which is on page 38. We're now going to talk about converting units. This will be the newest thing that you have done, so this will be fairly new. To convert from one unit to another, such as feet to inches, you multiply the original unit by a conversion factor that produces the desired unit. A conversion factor is a ratio of two equivalent measures in different units. A conversion factor is always equal to 1. It's very important that you understand that you have to have a 1 in either the numerator or denominator, such as 1 foot equals 12 inches. Now before we begin, I want to go over a couple things. For example, let's say you're starting with number of feet, and you want to change it to inches. What you're going to do is I'm going to have you draw like a fraction. So this is a fraction right here. You have a numerator and denominator. This will be a fraction. Numerator denominator. If you want feet as your startup, but your conversion is changing to inches, then feet 
divided by phi would cancel. That means you have to cancel the unit that you don't want. So you'd have to have a feet on the bottom or a foot. And then if we want inches, inches would go on top. So feet would cancel and you're left with a unit of inches on top. For example, if you wanted to figure out how many seconds is in a day. Now, we don't care about the number of days we have so far. So how many seconds are in a day? So let's say we're starting with number of days. What do we know? This is where you're going to have to know some previous knowledge. How do you convert to seconds? I'm going to have seconds way here at the end. So that means this is going to have to be number of days. Well, what do you know about the number of days? In one day, there are 24 hours. So the units of days are going to cancel. So now you have hours. Well, we don't want hours. So what do you know about one hour? In one hour, there's 60 minutes. Now the hours label is canceled. So minutes is going to have to go on bottom because we want those to cancel. So in one minute, we have how many seconds? 60. So let's say we had three days. What you would do is you would take, these are all the numerators, 3 times 24 times 60 times 60, and on bottom, 1 times 1 times 1, which just gives you 1. So to find your answer of how many seconds are in 3 days, you take 3 times 24 times 60 times 60. So here are three examples that we're going to look at. The question is going to ask, what is the given amount converted to the given units? Choose and multiply by the appropriate conversion factor. The appropriate factor will allow you to divide out the common units and simplify. So they're going to give you a given amount. So for example, in the first one, 330 minutes is the given amount. I want to know how many hours that is. So you're going to start with 330 minutes. Now because minutes is on top, as a label, we're going to have to have minutes on bottom. Now if I want hours, what can you tell me about this rate? You have to make up your own rate. Number of minutes, number of hours. Well, you should know that in one hour, there are 60 minutes. So when you actually solve this, the minutes cancel, and you're going to take 330 times 1, and 60 times 1. There's a 1 here. So 330 divided by 60, it would give you an answer of five and a half hours. Let's look at the next example. Five feet three inches, we want to convert to inches. Well, because three feet or three inches is already there, we don't have to convert that. So we're going to start with five feet. Inches is what I want. Feet is what we need to get rid of. So what do you know about inches and foot? Well, you should know that there are 12 inches in one foot. Feet cancel, so we take 5 times 12, that gives me 60 inches in 5 feet. So we have 60 inches. But remember the original 3 that we had, so you have to add the 3 on, so that would give you a total of 63 inches. So in 5 feet 3 inches, there are 63 inches. 15 kilograms. This one you may have to Google or look up if you don't know this. We want to get rid of kilograms and we want grams. Well, how many grams are in a kilogram? There's a thousand. So there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. So we take 15 times a thousand, and that would give you a measurement of 15,000 grams. And remember, grams is what we wanted, so that's the correct answer. So why don't you try the got it problem on page 38 as well as number 3 or 4. On the got it problem, you would have to take 1250 centimeters, convert it to meters, so you would have to know how many centimeters are in a meter. If you did it correctly, the correct answer would be 12 and a half meters, or 12.5 meters. Number 3, if you did that one, would be 189 feet. And number four, when you convert it to days, would be seven days. 
Now turn your book to page 39. You will notice, it says right here in problem 2, notice that the units for each quantity are included in the calculations to help you determine the units for answers. This process is called unit analysis or dimensional analysis. Basically right now you're converting between unit systems. So before, yards and feet is in the same unit of systems. It's the same system of units. Hours and days, the same system. Centimeters, meters, same system. Now, we're going to convert between meters and feet. That's a different unit of measurement. They're different systems. The CNN Tower in Toronto, Canada is about 1,815 feet tall. About how many meters tall is the tower? Use the fact that one meter is approximately 3.28 feet. You will notice that we have two systems here, two systems of units. We have feet and we have meters. So we have to start with 1,815 feet. Now remember, when I'm doing this, this is like a fraction. This is a fraction times this is a fraction. I'm just putting it in this grid because I like it easier. If you don't want to do that and you would rather do this, and do it that way, times another fraction, you can. Now, feet is what I want to get rid of, so if feet's in the numerator, we have to put it in the denominator. Well, it says in our conversion factor that one meter equals three and twenty-eight hundredths feet, so 3.28 feet, so feet cancel. So my fraction here would be 1,815 times one divided by 3.28. If you do that, that gives you approximately 553 meters. Go ahead and try the got it problem A and B on page 39. A, if you did it correctly, would give you approximately 442 meters, and B would give you approximately 205 euros. I am now on page 40 looking at the converting rates shaded area. It says that you can also convert rates. Now if you remember what a rate is, a rate is a ratio with two units of measurement. Miles per hour, feet per second, dollars per hour. So now you don't just have one unit of measurement when converting, you have two. So for example, you can convert a speed in miles per hour to feet per second. Because rates compare measures in two different units, you must multiply by two conversion factors to change both units. So this can get a little confusing, so let's do an example. A student ran the 50-yard dash in 5.8 seconds. At what speed did the student run in miles per hour? Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Now let's start with the given. In this problem, we know that the student went a 50-yard dash in 5.8 seconds. That's your fraction. This is our rate. Notice 50 yards in 5.8 seconds. You have two measurements here. Therefore, that's why this is a rate. So what do we want? This is my suggestion. It's completely up to you. But what we want is we want the answer of miles per hour. So we at the end want miles on top per hour on bottom. Now how you get there, it's up to you. But if you look at it, yards have to go to miles, seconds have to go to hours. So it doesn't matter what you start with, but let's say yards. I'm just going to start with the yards here. Just like we did before, you have a yard up top. So that means we have to have a yard on bottom. Well, hours or miles, which one do you think yards is going to be associated with? Well, it's going to be miles. It's a unit of measurement. So what do you know about the number of yards and the number of miles? You might have to look this up. This is something you probably don't know in your head, and that's fine. But you need to look it up. So miles per yard. So in one mile, how many yards are there? It would be 1,760. So right now, your yards are gone. Look at what you have. You have a mile on top. Miles. That's what you want. So miles is okay. But now, you want to get rid of the seconds. 
So where are the seconds located? The unit seconds is on the bottom. That means we're going to have to have seconds on top. And we already know we have to convert it to hours. So what do you know about the number of seconds in an hour? You might have to look it up. In one hour, how many seconds are there? 3,600. So now the second units are gone. And what are you left with? You're left with on top 50 times 3,600 and 5.8 times 1760. So if you actually multiplied that, 50 times 3600 gives you 180,000 miles. In, on bottom, 5.8 times 1760 gives you 10,208 hours. Well, if you divide 180,000, divided by 10,208, you will get approximately, rounded to the nearest tenth, 17.6 miles per hour, or you could write it as miles per hour. Either one is acceptable, but your answer would be 17.6 miles per hour.